and push water back out from the pump. Dude, look at this, this is perfect. Absolutely overgrowing. Hey, what's up, Reefers? This video, we're gonna test a product that claims to clear up cloudy water like this right here. This tank has been going through an up and down cycle of uh, really cloudy water. It seems to come every like two weeks or so. The last time this happened, I thought maybe it would burn itself out and sure enough, it did burn itself out within about four or five days. And it became crystal clear again for a week and it became cloudy like this once again. So I have a couple of speculation on what this cloudiness may be. It could be bacteria bloom, could be algae bloom, or it could be something spawning. Uh, the spawning, I may not be able to do much about it. Spawning could mean all the snails come up the top and just release sperm and eggs, or it could be the sea urchin. In terms of bacteria or algae bloom though, it could be that the tank has excess nutrient. Detectable nitrate and phosphate, but nothing crazy and nothing that could cause a serious bloom like this. But I could also argue that because there's a bloom, that's why the values are reading a little bit lower than it should. So about two weeks ago, I was on Keith, aka Reef Bloom's uh, live stream, and he mentioned the effectiveness of a UV sterilizer, and he actually recommended this one right here in my hand. Hand is called the Green Killing Machine. I just chuckled when I heard this because the name Green Killing Machine really reminded me of a certain dentist's office. And in the past, I've always treated UV sterilizer as something that, unless I spend a lot of money and size it properly, is probably not effective. But since this actually came highly recommended from Reform and seeing how the price is only $75 on Amazon, which I'll include in the link below in case this actually works, I figure, okay, let's give it a try. But the green killing machine is 24 watts and the review is uh, glowing on Amazon. Interesting packaging. I've actually not seen packaging like this. It kind of sealed it in. This is actually larger than what I was expecting. Let's do a sniff test. It smells like cheap plastic. That's what it smells like. This part smells like coins, like those old quarters that has sat under the sun. Or you pick up from uh, your coin section of your car. It smells like coins here. This part, yeah, it has like a plastic smell. But maybe I've been sniffing it, so it's uh, it's kind of dissipated a little bit. This, sir, is a huge power brick. So from my really, really limited understanding of a UV sterilizer, supposedly the, it had, the light should be a certain wattage uh, when compared to your tank volume for, in order for it to be effective. But we're not really trying to kill any like fish parasite and stuff like that. We're only trying to cure the cloudiness of the water. So. Maybe this is okay. We'll try it out. Moments later. All done. Um, I hope it is okay to install it diagonally in the instruction manual. Everything is uh, vertical, but then again, did not say that don't put it in any other position. According to the instruction, as long as that sponge portion is submerged, it should be okay. So what's going on here is that the water is going to go in from that sponge right there, and we do have like two extra sponge, and I assume it's going to go through that bottom chamber right there and then push water back out from the pump. And they say that the pump is restricted in terms of the flow in order to provide more contact time for the UV light. It makes sense. And I think like down here is kind of nice. It can provide a little additional flow for the macroalgae in the refugium. And let's come back up here. We'll enter photo mode. Right now it's Sunday afternoon at almost six o'clock. Uh, so mark this as the first day, although it has been cloudy for about two days already. It did not start it clearing up. Uh, usually it takes about a week. So with the $75 green killing machine installed, we're gonna see if it works, and if so, how long? The next morning. It was a reverse, now it is 10.30 in the morning. I have been running the UV for 12, around 12 hours. The tank has pretty much all cleared up. What the heck? Yesterday, after filming the video of me installing the UV, I posted a photo on Instagram talking about the units, and dude, I was surprised by how many people actually use it. How come I never heard about it until now? This is like the best kept well-known secret of the reef aquarium hobby. I'm not sure if this is coming through properly because I feel like the light may be hitting the lens certain angle and uh, cause things to be less contrasty. But the tank is too clear. This is amazing. And I'm just seeing how many copepods I have like all across the front glass. Look at this, I've, man. There has been like a copepod explosion. So I'm gonna leave the UV running for the rest of the day I'm gonna pull it. Because I feel like the UV is probably killing other things in the tank as well. I would preferably not leave it long term. In terms of curing my cloudy water issue, oh my goodness. 
Honestly, I'm, I'm seriously just blown away. I'm blown away by how effective it is. Now, of course, we still have the underlying problem of what caused the bacteria or algae bloom. If I have to put my money on something, it's probably the heavy feeding I've been doing for the MPS coral. Although I do notice that the bloom comes in cycles. I feel like maybe it's something spawning as well. Maybe it's the snails. Because um, I'll, I'll pay attention next time I see a bloom. I know in the past, I kind of blame Emily of using Lysol near my tank. I am sorry. I need to make it up to her because I feel like that was not it. Although I have to say using Lysol and air duster near a reef tank, any aquarium for the matter is dangerous but in this particular case of causing cloudy water she may be off the hook i think i was wrong i guess we found a super bullet uh, in the name of the green killing machine wow again i'm surprised by how many people actually uses this and nobody seems to be talking about it or maybe they're talking i'm just not listening two days later all right reefers when you see that i'm squatting outdoor you know we're in for a nice fun diy time not really i hate diy but this is something i really want to do so as you know recently i picked up a lot of frags and they came in these little frag plugs so far i've just been finding little holes in a uh, rock that i have and kind of shoved them in there and super glued them to keep them in place which for the most part works fine. However, when it comes to a nano tank, for example, my mangrove tank, I want to use smaller pieces of rock. But the problem is like, they don't usually come with like nice holes um, that I can really easily pop a frag plug into. So today's project is kind of twofold. Number one, to kind of break up this piece of rock. This is actually Bukani rock. And number two, to drill holes into these rocks so they can receive frag plug like this. First, I'm gonna break up this piece of Bukani rock into smaller chunks. Uh, usually Bukani is pretty soft, so I don't really foresee a lot of issues. For these, I usually like to just use flat hat screwdriver and a good old hammer, and we just go to town. And there you go, that's one big piece right here. I'm gonna break it up even more. More moments later. Oh guys, I'm sweating already. It's hot out here in Maryland. By the way, some flowers almost ready to bloom. I'll show you guys a little bit later, but we have accomplished what we set out to do. Breaking up that piece of uh, Bukani rock into smaller chunks like this. This is a larger one. Then we got like some smaller pieces like this that I'm kind of iffy about. I feel like if I drill this, it may crack, but I'm gonna give it a try just for the process of uh, learning. This is also a big piece as well, but this feels pretty soft. Oh, this, that went in really, really easily. It's like tofu. All right, moment of truth, 3 8 your bitch. For the 3 8 let's see. I think it's perfect, actually. Let's, let's go a little deeper. Dude, look at this, this is perfect. If I have a larger drill bit, I'm probably gonna shave down the side so that the whole plug can sit flush with the rock. I'm totally down with this. This is nice and it's really secure as well. Well, did it. As I push a frag in, this thing cracked. It's too bad. All right, guys, so here are what we got. Uh, I still got two or three pieces to drill, but then my drill is out of power. So I got to come back at a future time. But I think this is more than enough to get me started. So for my Gorgonia in the mangrove tank, this would be perfect. And I got some like two holders like these that's like closer together. I plan to expand my Zoa garden with these in 135. And I got two extra ones for uh, the special frag that I want to make sure that it does not fall over and stuff like that. And I still got half a box of Bacani's slash Reef Safer rocks that I can uh, experiment with. Bukani rock has been really easy to drill into. It's like drilling straight into tofu straight in. I suspect that the reef safer rock may be a little bit more effort, but since I'm on team red, it should be no problem punching through. I got some of these mason bits. And again, the mason bit is the 3 8 uh, The 3 8 is like just the right fit. So I got to kind of like wiggle in there a little bit after I'm done to kind of expand the hole a little bit, just so that the whole thing can fit in there snug. And one of the rock right here, the hole was a little bit too snug. I push the frag in and try to twist a little bit and end up cracking the whole thing. So lessons learned. Now I just drill in and use drill bit to kind of move around a little bit to expand the hole a little bit. So tragedy like this does not happen again. We're gonna super glue some of these frag plug into the rock. Actually, I don't think I even need to super glue them. And we're gonna just kind of put these rock in the tank and give them a go. Two days later. Hey, what's up, Reefers? It's been a while since I've shown you guys the mangrove tank. And in the meantime, I've actually bonsai the mangrove tree. But I'll show you guys in a follow-up video. Do you want to follow up on the frag rock that I made a little bit earlier in this video? Um, and that's what the Gorgonian is actually sitting on right now, which you actually cannot see. In the past, every week, I'll have to adjust the Gorgonian as it get pushed by either the flow or snails or whatnot and get pushed over. But ever since I popped the Gorgonian frag plug onto that rock that we made, it has been standing erect ever since and it's looking fantastic. Now all the corals are kind of close up right now because right now it's uh, really early in the morning. I just turn on the white light to film before my work. Uh, so things are kind of like closed up, which also I was hoping to 
let us have a good look. Actually, you can kind of see it, especially in the reflection. By the way, the background is actually a one-way mirror film that I'm testing out um, instead of using a blackout so I can kind of see it from the back. I'm not sure if I'm in love with the um, one-way mirror background. I may change it out to the white frosted one. I do still have the window film as well. But for now, you can kind of, from the background, see how the frag is situated on the rack. The plug that the Gorgonian is on is a little bit larger than the one I tested the uh, frag plug holder with. So in hindsight, I could have made the uh, hole a little bit larger so it's more reciprocated to the other type of frag plugs, but it is working well. Um, Gorgonian has not fallen once since. And I wish I've made those kind of like frag holder for all my corals and especially this Gorgonian uh, way sooner because now I don't have to disturb the coral uh, each time it falls over. And every time it falls over and I mess with it, I feel like it stalls its growth. So so I feel like I've lost some time there. By the way, this tank has changed a lot since the last time I've talked about it. Just look at how much the macroalgae has grown. I've also added some of the really interesting soft colors, including this Japanese pink nephias. This is the Kenjawada, I think that's how you pronounce it. So I got one big frag here. That's thanks to um, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Lin. Um, it also kind of broke off and I ended up with a tiny little frag on here on this original frag plug as well. And I also added a lot of different kind of macroalgae like the shaving brush. I also got uh, some money plants in the bag. And of course I got this guy right here and different, just different kind of macro that I'm experimenting with, having a good time. This is a fun little tank. And again, the tank just woke up, so everything is not really opened up yet. Normally they don't look like this. But the next thing on my list to do today is actually to shave off some of these um, Rasta Zoas because it's absolutely overgrowing my Christmas tree worm rock. And of course we cannot let that happen. Another fun little thing that I'm thinking about doing is that on the red bubble algae that I got from Levy's uh, MPS Reefer, there's one single strand of chados. I'm thinking about just growing that one tiny strand of chados into like a ball of chado to be used in the 145 gallon tanks refugium because the red algae in the refugium is not really growing too well over there. So I may switch over to chados and instead of like buying a whole big ball, what if I just grow that thing out? That'd be hilarious. And I do also have some bubble algae issues that I need to address in this tank. But anyways, we should do a proper tank update on the mangrove tank because there are a lot of really interesting things happening and I have some interesting plan uh, for the red mangrove as well. All right guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, leave a like and leave a comment letting me know in the next video, would you like to see an update on the mangrove tank or do you want to see an update on the 135 gallon tank, which a lot has happened to as well. Like always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12 o'clock Game Shop. By the way, I want to show you guys this coral. This is uh, sometimes known as the Blue Xenia, but uh, its actual name is like Sephiroda.